Hey guys, Chip here. So I was on Reddit today looking in the Blender Health channel and I saw this how to create a wooden carving design like this one. Someone wanted to know how to do it. And of course, there's a lot of answers in here. A lot of them talk about manually creating, you know, tracing over this and all that. And I thought, there's a faster way to do this. And let's talk about that for a second. The first thing I would do is take this picture, drop it into Photoshop and just use this tool over here called Perspective Crop Tool. And you basically crop it so that it looks like this, then export it. Then I put it in this program called Sculpt talk image generators. This is evidently one of the top ones out there. And I'm looking through these things. This 3D preview, this one looks pretty good. You can see there is a watermark on here. So let's go ahead and let's download that. So I was going to download it without the watermark for 18 credits, which I already have a hundred. So I should be good. Confirm. Okay. So now go into Blender and delete. Sorry. Let's turn off this and shift and it's just drag and drop that grayscale image in there. So here it is right here. I'm going to just drag and drop it right in there like that. And, and we'll go to item and the zero up rotation and zero up location. And as you can see, I want to create a plane with the exact same size as that. Shift A, add a mesh, add a plane in the image editor. And we view that particular image. We'll see that it's 432 by 1280. So I just need to break this. 432 by 1280. So that's easily done by just going 43.2 by 128. And that's pretty good. And then once that done, control apply scale, scale it down to 0 0.2, part one, something close. So that's good. That's 4.3. Let's do 0 0.05. Let's get it. That's good. So control A, scale again. And now we can take this. Let's just move this guy off over here so we can see it. So the next thing I want to do is we're going to select this object. I really want to divide it. I'll divide it. I just want to make these kind of squarish. Go to top view, turn off perspective, control R, and let's do that again. I just kind of want to make them square. And that's good. So now we've got all of these. And I'll go in here and add a modifier and do a subdivision surface. I'm going to make it simple. I want to show optimal display. So Q is going to wireframe. You'll see that's how much we have. So let's keep on going to three. So let's try three for now. We're going to actually jack it up quite a bit, but now that's done. I'm going to go back into shader editor and make a new material. And let's grab this image, drop it in here. And we should be able to add the color to this. And you'll see it looks correct. So what I now want to do is with that done, I'm going to go over here and add another modifier, a displace modifier. And I'll create a new texture. And I want the type to be image. And I want the image to be this one here. I don't really need the alpha, so I can turn that off. Now I'll go back to here. I want the coordinates to be UV. And I want the strength to be, let's do point 0.2 and tab point 0.2. Turn the wireframe off. Oh, we need to make sure we're at the right texture, which is texture one. There. So, so that came up fine. Now, here's where our object is. The trick here is that we really want to jack up this. So I'm going to go four, five, six. So you can start to see that it's really tightening up quite a bit. It's got a little bit of this, but that's because it's a wooden material. So now this is done. Let's look over here. We've got 1.6 million triangles. I want more than that. So I'm going to go to seven. It's going to take a while. So that's six point. Okay. So that's pretty good. And now the question is, do I want to make it stronger or less? Let's actually make this four. Let's get the height exactly right. And then we'll go back to seven. So actually it's probably not bad. Point one. A little bit, yeah. Point two looks about right, and mid level. This is, yeah, I can make this is zero. Let's do point one five, yeah, something like that. So, if we look at our original picture, that looks like it could be correct. Let's take a look. Let's make this a little darker so we can see it better. Maybe I'll add a little shininess to it. Okay, now let's jack it back up to seven. There we go. Here's our image. Once that's done, I'm going to apply all these modifiers. So 
Let me go ahead and save first. And apply all. And there we have it. Now, I'm going to tab into this, and you'll see we're tabbing into a, something with 6.5 million polygons. I'm going to hit A to select everything. Now I'll go to Mesh, and I'm going to say Clean Up, and I'm going to say Decimate Geometry. And I'm going to enter in here 0.1. It's a good place to start. Now, it's going to take, I don't know, maybe two, three minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. Mine's fairly fast. It's not the fastest, but it's very fast. And it has to do with your CPU, not your GPU. This doesn't get done on the GPU. It gets down on the CPU. So we're going to let this go for a little bit. That maybe took two minutes. Now I'm looking at this and I can turn this off so I can see what we have. Okay, now we have 655,000 triangles. I'm going to tab out of this. It's a Shift A, Mesh, Cube, and I'm tabbing into this. I'm doing this because I don't want to eat the cycles as we go through this other one. So I'm going to say Clean Up and Decimate Geometry. Instead of 0.1, I'm going to go 0.3. Now I can tab into this and X delete that. Now I go in here and say Tab A and Mesh Decimate geometry and notice it's 0.3 now not 0.1 and it'll go a lot faster it's done and we can look at it see what it looks like and then i can add a smooth on this turn this on there we are so let's hide this and make the factor one and repeat 55 times okay if we smooth it like that. That's what it looks like. Too much. So let's make it 10. There we go. A little better. Maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.1. That's pretty good. So we'll stay with that. Next thing I want to do is I want to take this as a piece of wood and I want to extrude it. So I'm going to hit Tab and I'll hit A and I'll say Select Boundary Loop. There it is. And I'll say EZ. Move it down. And we have a hole there. I want to just hit F to fill it. And then we'll move it back up. So that's going to be our wood. Let's take this, hide it. Now, what I can do at this point is we have 197,000. I can reduce it more and see what happens. And I can do that easily with just a, adding a modifier at this point. Decimate. And we'll say collapse in ratio 0.1. So now we're at 19,000. That's the wireframe for that. But I could say... 0.5 as well. And that actually looks pretty good. Lastly, I'm going to go here. I'll use kit hops here for this just because it's faster. I'm going to add a wood. Actually, let's do a triplanar. So wood, and there's wood in here. One thing you'll notice is that now that we've got this, the UVs aren't correct anymore. So let's grab something simple. Let's add one of these woods. Okay, there's plywood. But so. The UVs aren't going to be all that accurate. Let's go back to my triplanar. The reason why I'm using triplanar is I want to be able to move it or rotate that around easily. Let's add that material. And then we just need to scale it. We we'll get a little funky stuff going on here. So let's apply this. There we are. There's our better wood. I can set the scale larger. And that. And if I want, I can rotate it 90. And let's also just make it concrete to see what it looks like. Get an idea. Anyway, that's a quick way to create, you know, some relief. If you want to straighten out these, my Lord, let's just do that real quick. I'll just do that while, while we're here. Let's do one more thing. Tab, the one, Alt Z. We just want to grab, you know, all of these basically here. And we want to scale them to X, scale X, zero. And then, you know, grab all of these on the edge here. And this one, scale X, zero. Scale Y, zero, and I'm grabbing these two. Scale Y, zero. Now that's pretty straight, so you get the idea. I'm just see what other kind of materials I might want to make. Let's try metal. Look at the CW. Yeah, these CW2 ones have an anastropic hooked up to them. So if I do, for instance, something like this one here and add that material to it, you can see. 
as long as we're rendering in cycles, we're going to get nice anastropic services. You can adjust the rotation here and the amount here too. If you're having stuff like this going on, you can say shade auto smooth and that'll help it. And then you can come back in here also. Sometimes it'll help to just go ahead and add a weighted normal to it. And maybe let's turn this off, see what happens. Yeah, that actually works a little bit better. Just turning, you know, not even use the smooth shade, the weighted normal. And this particular case looks like it's working a little better. So anyway, that's, that's me playing around with that. Hope that helps. See you later. Bye.